Reporting for Heart Rhythm TV, I'm Meg Dandi, and I'm joined by Dr. Vijay Raman from Geisinger Heart Institute, and we're coming off of the first late-breaking clinical trial, CIEDs. Dr. Vijay Raman, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having you. Of course, the pleasure is all ours. Um, we are going to discuss the TechSpam study, which you just presented. Uh, tell us about the findings of the study and then the key implications for, for clinical practice. I know it's been so anticipated. Uh, what do we do when we have to extract left bundle area pacing leads? Yeah, because uh, compared to traditional leads, uh, his bundle and left bundle area pacing leads are in a different location. Uh, one, it's in the conduction system. The other, it's in a deep muscular region. So there was always concerns about what complication we can find. Or is it easy to get these leads out? Because the majority of the leads used were luminless leads. So we were trying to answer both of those questions. Um, so we had about 341 patients included in the study. This is a retrospective observational study. Uh, to our surprise, uh, the vast majority of the leads, 90% of the leads, we were able to remove with manual traction. Uh, I want to underscore the point that the left bundle branch pacing leads, there are only 20 stylet driven leads. Uh, remaining 80 plus leads are all luminless leads. And these leads are all less than three years old. So we don't have long term data on these leads. While his bundle pacing leads, the longest was about 15, 16 years old. And those leads do tend to come out well. And 100% success in removing almost all of the leads, except for three patients where small fragments were left behind. So, Gotcha. And tell us a little bit about the indications for these extractions uh, and if they varied from his bundle versus the left bundle area pacing locations. Yeah, the major reason for removing uh, his bundle pacing leads were a progressive increase in thresholds. And so with the availability of left bundle branch pacing, during generator change, many of these leads were removed and a new lead placed in. Uh, so often we would place the left bundle lead first and then take out the his bundle pacing leads. 60-70% uh, of them were for uh, high thresholds. In the left bundle branch area pacing, major reason was for infections and uh, traditional indications. And another uh, one four to half of the leads were for threshold more than threshold increase or micro dislodgement and leads were no longer capturing the left bundle or left septum, rather capturing mid septum or RV septum, in some cases frank dislodgement. So oh, those were the reasons for removing the left bundle branch tracing leads. Gotcha. And the number of extractions that required laser uh, instruments was very low, which was... Yeah, so in the study, overall, 10% of patients need some extraction tool. Uh, majority of them were mechanical extraction tools, like the Cook Evolution system. And there were only three patients uh, laser was used. Um, one was to retain access, because in that particular patient, we had to use... Uh, femoral snare to maintain access because the lead would come out rather easily. So you pull from below and make a lumen from above for an ICD upgrade for that patient. Um, so laser was also depending on the individual sites used, so they were not that much in use in most of the centers that did this lead extraction except for one center, uh, or two centers actually. and. The traditional Cook Evolution system was pretty good in removing most of these leads. Understood, understood. And as you mentioned, this is not very long-term data. So uh, as we were discussing earlier, if you've had these leads in for many, many years, what's the impact on the septum? It still remains to be seen. But in this study, there were no VSDs noted, both for the infection and the high threshold indications. Yes, uh, that, that was somewhat reassuring for us. Um, well, I was very pleasantly surprised in many of the leads that I had taken out. Uh, just uh, pulling on the lead and holding traction for three full cardiac cycle was enough. Even one, two, three-year-old lead. These are all deep septal left bundle branch capturing leads. Even when it was deep in there, would just come out with no residual. We could do echo, eyes, nothing. We can't see anything on those. So those were somewhat reassuring. One concern we have is stylet driven leads may not be as sturdy and we don't know how they behave in the long term. 
a larger surface area, maybe more fibrosis on the RV septal side. So we have to wait and see what happens to those leads. So we continue to collect data on these patients. Understood. Yeah, so I think when it comes to lead design itself and the implications of that and, and the kind of extraction tools that may be required down the line, if we end up seeing that more tools are needed, unlike the, the, the short-term uh, leads, I guess those things still need to be investigated in longer-term studies. Yeah, so I think though, those may come in play as we learn more. Some of these leads, um, there was one case, there was a great case by Greg Suppel in the University of Pennsylvania where they had to come up with uh, new gadgets to remove those leads. They were well, um, so I'm very concerned is when the screw is embedded deep into a membranous tissue, then extraction can become very challenging in these. The lead can fall apart because that tissue is so strong in holding, um, the distal end may not give way. So that's where they were both pulling from below and above to make it work. So we may need some tools like that. Most of those tools are available. But hopefully we don't have to use those tools. And the good news is it's not as scary as the Starfix lead in terms of coronary sinus lead extraction. So it gives us reassurance that these leads can be removed easily. So the adoption of this will be more um, those who are waiting on the sidelines concerned about lead extraction. I think this will give them some reassurance. Yeah, absolutely. Very topical study. I think a lot of folks across the country that as we adopt left bundle area pacing more and more, that question comes up all the time of what happens when we have to extract, extract these leads. And this was a really nice pivotal initiation of this, this kind of data, and I'm sure there'll be more data to come in the future. Uh, thank you very much for your work, Dr. Bajerman, and thank you for talking to us today. Thank you very much. Uh, good day. And continue to follow HRS TV on YouTube for exclusive coverage of late-breaking clinical trials from HRS 2024.